If, like me, you believe that climate change is a real thing, then you're going to find this next clip truly sickening, as GB News presenters try to pick apart the points made by Just Stop Oil spokesperson Alex De Koning. It all starts out pretty well, but watch how the GB News presenters descend into an almost juvenile mess as they try to find a flaw in the arguments made by De Koning so they can easily dismiss what he's saying. I'm going to let this whole thing play all the way through without any commentary and then pick things up at the end. Now, just a few moments ago, Labour leader Keir Starmer's speech on education in Kent was interrupted by Green New Deal protesters. Who are this lot? Let's have a look at what happened. Done that one. Will you just... Which side are the Labour we, Party on? We are on the side of economic growth. Will you just let me please get on with this? Thank you very much. Oh, that actually made it onto the stage and, and behind you know, that's him. That's interesting because when he made his first big speech at the Labour Party conference, there were hecklers, but I almost thought they were scripted because his responses were very good ah. and they, they were prepared for it. That was a typical flat-footed response from Starmer. But that's because he's U-turned on a £28 billion green deal because he U-turns every week. Well, let's speak now to another Just Stop Oil activist, Alex de Koning, uh, who joins us. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, you haven't convinced Keir Starmer, have you? And he's the Labour leader. Uh, well, he has, actually, he has actually adopted the demand of no new oil and gas and coal. So um, we have convinced him in this regard, but he has backpedaled very sadly on his £28 billion a year green pledges. So it, obviously he's he'll still keep his feet on the fire. He's also criticised your tactics which um, I think most people in the country would agree with, are disruptive, unpopular and counterproductive, Alex? I mean, doing disruption for disruption's sake is obviously terrible. And it's, there's no excuse for that. But this is not disruption for disruption's sake. We're trying to raise the fire alarm. And when you hear the fire alarm, you shouldn't just stay in the building and debate about tactics. You should get out the building, call the fire brigade, stop pouring oil on the flames and find the fire extinguisher. Don't you agree? OK, how, how long have we got, Alex? I mean, literally, wh how, how long do we have until the planet is unrecognisable? H how urgent is this? It's a really good question. Um, it's not as simple as that. It's not going to be like a light switch that turns off and suddenly... Ice, ...but things are already getting so much worse. I mean, have you seen in New York the, the smoke? People couldn't leave their house because they couldn't breathe. 10 million people couldn't leave their house because they couldn't breathe because of wildfires in Canada. 33 million people in Pakistan last year had their homes completely decimated by floods. Their houses, their pets, their wedding photos washed away in one go. The same with the floods in Northern Italy, same with the 40 degree heat wave here, where 1,700 people died in two days. What, but what, here? Did you say? Yes, uh, last summer, 40 degrees. How many people did you say died? We just had a few sound issues there. In the UK, you're you, you attributing how many deaths to climate change over a couple of days? Um, during our 40 degree heat wave last summer, 1,700 people died. Where did you get that figure from? Well, where did you get that figure from? Widely reported. No, and where did you get that from? Widely report. reported. What respected body did you get that figure from? I think that's from the government's own reports, but if you, you want to talk about this, the no, UN... Alex, has Alex, said... Alex, sorry, you can't come on here and say, I think you're making a very serious claim. You have to tell us where you get that information from. So let's try again. UN, where did you get it from? The UN has said that 4 million people have no, died as a result. No, talking about what you said about Britain. You said 1,400 and so died over two days. So where did you get that? Right, if you want to say that again, let me Google it. I'll find it in two seconds. We well, haven't got time for you to Google it. But just, so just explain to me, Alex. But just to explain. So those people, those British people, you're saying dropped dead because our climate emergency is such. What do they die from? What did, they, what did they actually die from that was related to the heat in two days? So that, that figure was from the World Health Organization, which I hope you can agree is a respected body. I don't, and actually. They died. I don't. I don't. I think the World Health Organization has absolutely baked in profit motives and control motives to want us to believe all of this. But if, if OK, but we all want British people to live a, a good, healthy life. We don't want 1,700 people dropping dead over two days. Where did they so get it from? Why, anyway? why did the cli what, how did climate kill these people? Okay, so there's a variety of different factors, right? 
Um, in this case, it was because of the extreme heats. People died from heat stroke. Um, when the temperature gets hot enough, for example, um, when it gets so hot that the sweat no longer cools you down, you literally boil in your own sweat. I know that sounds like complete exaggeration. It does but actually. When it gets, I'm afraid it does sound like exaggeration. <laughs> I've never heard it's of anybody boiling exaggeration to say that people die in fires. I've never like, heard of I mean, anybody really boiling in their, their own sweat. sweat. What we boiling to do? Like, if there's a wildfire, people die from it. If How there's a you, flood, people die from it. If there's a hurricane, you have to people boil die for before you die. <laughs> This shouldn't be so funny. Uh, listen, I, I, what, we, what we're finding... Many people are dying and you're literally laughing. No, well, because no, it's making silly no. claims. <laughs> boiling I... to death. Listen, Not silly claims also, to say that the are, climate crisis are, causes wildfires. If there are elderly if there are elderly people who might be vulnerable in the very, very hot weather, and I agree with you on that, then those, mm. those, those care homes, the, people, the hospitals might be looking after those people, have a responsibility to, to keep to... those people cool and to provide think, air conditioning. Do you think you're to death as long as you boil an egg? <laughs> but, I'm sorry, listen, Alex, I think you're bringing... You're bringing you've, I think you need to... If you don't mind me saying, Alex, I think you need to grow up a bit, actually, <laughs> because this is ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, really? Really? Alex, okay, well, I, I appreciate your opinion. Um, yeah, well, but I'm just literally, trying, 10 just, million people could not leave their home people in New died, York for several days. And now they, people are boiling to death in their sweat. Outside. They're boiling to death. Perhaps they should put more deodorant on. <laughs> Alex, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to have a grown-up conversation with you. The impact of Just Stop Oil protests is that you are alienating. This is the thing. We find you kind of hilarious when a man goes onto the court at Wimbledon and throws a jigsaw around. Yes. It doesn't make us buy into your. Uh, perhaps well-intentioned ambition to save the planet. You're losing the it's room, not an mate. It's opinion to say that the climate crisis is killing people. Why I can't jigsaw? believe I'm having Alex, this conversation. Alex why, Alex, why a jigsaw? I don't think I've ever seen a jigsaw gaily distributed around a tennis lawn and a high-profile climate change protest captured on TV. What a waste of a Indeed. jigsaw. It was a waste of a jigsaw. Really? Do you at least agree that when there are wildfires and there's floods and there's droughts, it's harder to grow crops? No, that means we're going to have more food sleep insecurity. In case I fall to death in my sweat. <laughs> Alex, we're going to have to let you go because we're running late to the headlines. Alex, um, thanks for coming. <laughs> Sorry, we've got to go for the news. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for joining us. So, what are your thoughts about the presenter's truly c behaviour? I'd also really like to know what you feel about Just Stop Oil's tactics. Are they working? Click here for a reaction to the reaction on Just Stop Oil's interference at the World Champion Snooker Tournament.